Hey guys, it's Danny. Um, before I started this video, I did a boo boo. I dropped, or actually one of the orchids you see here, it fell to the floor. Yeah, so if the Elizabeth and Buckleberry will look a little bit like it's been through something, that's because it has. Excuse our appearance today, but sometimes I'm clumsy. I I'm clumsy many times, but sometimes I'm very clumsy. Anyway, Hi guys, welcome to today's video. I have an update for you guys with Bulbophyllum. I promised you this update when I talked about the Bulbophyllum medusa, which is currently in bloom. And I'm hoping that this angle will better show the Bulbophyllums that I have to show you today. These are not all my Bulbophyllums. There is another one that is still in the cabinet, but I don't have any more space. There's nothing to see there anyway, so I'm just gonna briefly make a b-roll and show it to you. But yeah, today I want to show you the Bulbophyllums that I do have still in bloom. They're on their way out, but there's something. I can show you something and yeah, talk a little bit about them because I don't usually make Bulbophyllum videos on my channel and that's because I don't have too, too many Bulbophyllums. I've discovered some stuff about them, so I'm gonna share with you my experience growing these guys in a warm climate and maybe it will help you out. Before we start though, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week and it's absolutely free. But if you're feeling a little extra and you can and you want to further support the channel, please do consider visiting the description and using the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch, becoming a member even, or using the super thanks option below my videos. Righty then. So, Bulbophyllums. I have been growing Bulbophyllums for a decade almost. This is a very old Bulbophyllum in my collection. It might not be 10 years might be nine or eight and a half, but it's an old Bulbophyllum in my collection. This is the Elizabeth N. Buckleberry, which many of you guys know. And yeah, we've been in bloom. Blooms are going out, but I did manage to film them. I have some footage to show you. We've been in bloom for the past week or so. One thing you should know about Bulbophyllums is that they don't stay in bloom way too long. The blooms don't last, which is a shame because the blooms are some of the most spectacular in the orchid world. Oh no, this bloom is fading as we speak. This petal was not like this. Oh no, have to hurry with this video. Right, let's focus on the Elizabeth and Buckleberry. This is my oldest Bulbophyllum and as we can see, it's spilling. And this is the Bulbophyllum that fell. So Oof, we don't look we don't look so well look at that oh my goodness luckily for me I needed to repot it anyway because we've been in here for I don't know three four years at this point we've been in here for a while we need to move out of here but my dilemma is I don't know what to pot it in because here's the thing Bulbophyllums are thirsty orchids and they will always do better in an environment which is rather moist than dry and people usually use baskets for them because they do have this crawling nature and pretty unruly and they usually spill over pots. People usually keep them in baskets. However, in warm environments, baskets are a headache because they need very frequent watering. Now, sure, if you have a garden, you can hose them down. Everything is fine. You can totally do that. But if you don't have a garden, you have a problem with baskets and I have a problem too because I don't have a garden so I have to find something that will appease their thirst and give them space and also provide them with water so I have them potted in these food containers that are rather wide but as we can tell they cannot hold this madness anymore so I absolutely need to repot this orchid because it's growing outside the roots are outside and that's not good because it's very dry and warm outside and I don't know exactly what to pot them in. I was considering some baskets and I was considering lining them with cocoa fiber so that they hold in, or maybe some plastic or something, so that they hold in some moisture while, you know, the orchid can grow on the basket. That's fine with me. And the sphagnum moss that I have, it lasts. It lasts years. I have no issue. I can keep a bulbophyllum film in something like that for years. And at some point, you know, if it grows, and spills it's fine um, but I'm not sure I'm not sure because this uh, pot situation doesn't work for me anymore and that's something you need to consider because some bulbophyllums films are going to be big and they're gonna grow fast and the Elizabeth and Buckleberry is one of them it's one of the most beautiful ones but really honestly it requires some maintenance and some space and for home growing it might not be the best orchid but these blooms 
I think they're worth it and I'm gonna find a solution. Moving on to another one that has the same problem, but it's a little bit tinier. This one is my daisy chain crossed with purpurescence. Again, it's been in this pot for three, four years. And look at that. I need to do something. It's growing. It's growing everywhere. Oh my goodness. And you know what? Sometimes I don't want to divide it. Although I think like if I count, I have a hundred growths here. I can totally divide it, but I kind of don't want to because imagine all of these growths growing these beautiful daisy-like flowers. Maybe with this one, what I would do is it even possible? I wanted to like remove the oldest growth, but at this point I cannot even tell which is the oldest growth. Could, could be in the center, but then again, the center has new growth as well. It's a problem. You see what the problem with bulbophyllums is? Sometimes when you have them for a lot of time and they're doing good, which is great, they kind of outgrow their condition. And I feel very bad for this one because the growths have started to grow like next to the pot, inside of the decorative pot, and that's not nice that's not okay so yeah i'm considering more and more having them in a basket and like you know managing somehow maybe you know i can get one of those tubs that falls down i've seen them in shops and i can at least put tap water and just soak them from time to time in tap water maybe i also considered starting with the division i consider putting them in the orchidarium yes i have soil but these guys they like wetness. I'm gonna try them in soil. Why not? Why? What's the worst that can happen? I'm just gonna put a division, see how it goes. Because there they can splurge, right? They can grow however much they feel like. And I don't have to worry about watering them enough because that soil is always a little bit moist. So I'm gonna try, just for the sake of an experiment, I'm gonna get a division from the daisy chain because it's not like I'm gonna miss that division. I have a hundred growths here, oh my goodness. What am I gonna do with it? <laughs> so I'm gonna try it in the orchidarium. That's a good idea. So these two are the oldest bulbophyllums that I have. This is the oldest, this is the second oldest. Not sure how many years now, five, six years maybe. This one as well. They are doing okay. I'll have to be honest, they're not like super, super, super adequate for this environment. I mean, I have to work a little for it. They do like moisture and they would appreciate humidity as well. But as you can see, they survive. They're not like the Miltoniopsis. They, they can do with what I can give them. Might not be ideal. This one should have bloomed a little bit more, but at this point it's getting dehydrated so fast and it's so crowded. I don't know, maybe it shades itself. Maybe it's too crowded. I don't know at this point. It should have bloomed a little better than this. So we'll see what that's about because it used to bloom a little bit better than this. Um, but yeah, this one has an issue right now fitting in the pot. So apart from these, I also have a few newer ones. This is the new little favorite. I mean, I love all of you guys. I don't have a favorite, but this one is just the first time bloomer and it's like Bulbophyllum Medusa. I did film a spotlight just previously talking more about the Medusa. So I will try to make sure that I post that video before I post this one. So everything makes sense. But this, as you can see, is a tinier Bulbophyllum. Now this one can grow very big as well, kind of like this, but I only have this one for like three years or so, two, three years at this point. And when I purchased it, it was quite tiny and it grew very nice in this pot, but as we can see, it's outgrowing it. This one is not problematic yet because it's in a tiny pot, but it will become problematic. However, look at, look at this. It's beautiful. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can do some sacrifices and keep these guys in baskets because they're just so beautiful. That's the main issue with them. They crawl and they grow fast. And the thing is though, they are not massive root producers either. I mean, what you saw here, this is a vigorous root system, but it, I mean, compared to a sherry baby, it's nothing compared to the sherry baby, right? This is how bulbophyllums grow. They have shallow roots. That's why most people and I myself grow them in shallow pots. They don't need depth. So they don't have a massive root system, but it's important that the roots that they have get hydration because the older roots with time, they will die off. It's the nature of any orchid to lose older roots after a number of years. So the orchid will rely on the new roots and the new roots, if they grow in air and you don't have, you know, greenhouse conditions or you cannot really hose them or sprinkle them every day, they'll have issues. Most of us growing these orchids in home conditions, we have some issues. They need to be in medium. Otherwise, they're gonna desiccate and that will mean 
the orchid will not do good anymore because it will get more and more dehydrated as the older roots which are potted die off if the new roots are not potted so that's my dilemma so there are a few ways to mitigate this many people apart from baskets sometimes like to use mounds but again if you don't have the availability to grow these guys on mounds to water them as often as they need you know mounds are not an option and they're not an option for me either except in the paludarium so i might i might go for something in the paludarium we'll see but these are too many bulbophyllums for the paludarium so i might have to restrain i might have to like put some in the paludarium and some in a basket you know we'll see and the last one that i'm going to show you and i'm going to show you the other one briefly as well but there's nothing to see there this is bulbophyllum masterianum this one bloomed before but it has been a while since it bloomed i don't know why exactly they grow slow when they're set back or something's up and I do believe I had like uh, thrips issues here and it was set back. When set back happens, they take a while to bounce back. Once they're okay and established, this happens. But when they're set back, it takes a while. So this one was potted here in 2021 as well. So two years ago, it didn't grow too much, right? But now it's starting to grow vigorously. It has quite a few new growths and a lot of roots and the bulb the bulbs the bulbs are getting big so i'm hoping to get some flowers again from this one because he is beautiful so see something like this i would put in the paludarium because it's tiny but this guy he's not tiny so this probably will go in a basket in a vanda basket or something i don't know i was also considering a plastic basket because it doesn't break down. I, I don't know. See, I don't know. I'm so torn. I don't know what to do with them. Maybe you guys can give me some ideas. If you have some suggestions for setups, let me know. If you grow these guys in home conditions or warm environments and you have the same issue as me, you cannot hose them down, what are your solutions? If you have tips, let me know. Because I'm torn. I, I could do many things, but I don't know which of the things is better you know so yeah this one looks a little bit like the daisy chain i will put some pictures on the screen because i had it in bloom uh, a while back it didn't bloom since but at least i know it it is mature and it's beautiful and the last bulb film that i have it's still there it needs repotting as well i need to cut away some of the older growths and practically restart it that one i might restart oh restart <laughs> in the orchidarium but yeah there's nothing to see there it never bloomed all of these bubble films are grown in the same place by the way they're in one of my cabinets because they don't like or actually pests like them way too much and they don't like the piss and i do believe i had one of the bubble films have a lot of uh, grace leaves which one was it maybe it was this one maybe the master mastercianum Maybe that's why it was set back. One of them was very, very badly attacked. So I kept them in one of the IKEA cabinets and that worked out great. I'm not entirely sure if it worked out that great for them, but they're free of pests now. And hey, these guys bloomed in there. So, okay. Uh, but I feel like I can do better. I feel like uh, I can come up with better setups and solutions but these have been my bulbo films and as you can tell i'm not in a hurry to get more of them because i think or i feel like these are the easiest bulbo films um there are a few that are easy as well but there are those very very tiny ones that are no they like humidity so i'm thinking either in my humidity chamber i could try them out either in the orchidarium you know i could try them out at some point um I will be fully honest i'm not in a position to do like the lavish holes that i once did um i have some priorities at the moment that are more important and i have enough for kids to do my job for now uh, so new bulbo films i would love to have some but you know they're not a priority right now uh, but when I do get some bulbo films, it will be the tiny ones that I can grow in the orchidarium, maybe mounted. That would be great. For now, though, I think that is enough bulbo films for me because these guys, they're a pain in the behind, but <laughs> I love them. And especially the Medusa. She won my heart. I love it just as much as everybody else, but she's so cute and fuzzy. I want to hug her. Don't touch the flowers much though. As I discovered and you will see in the spotlight video, these 
petal extensions and all of these fibers, they are very delicate and they kind of cling to your fingers and you can rip them off. So try not to touch them way too much. You know, enjoy the orchid from afar. Oh, it stinks. Not that bad, but it doesn't smell so good. Uh, that's the only drawback. It doesn't have a pleasant scent. But as long as you don't stick your nose in the flower, you should be fine. So yeah, these have been my Bulbophyllums, as I was saying, not in a hurry to get too many others because they pose a few challenges for me in this environment. We'll see what the future brings. For now, though, I am in a sort of no haul era for um, an undisclosed period of time. Not undisclosed, what's the word? Unlimited, I guess. Unlimited period of time. And Bulbophyllums are not really that high on my wish list because of these challenges. But I do really, really, really enjoy the ones I have. Remember at some point I was on a mission to popularize Bulbophyllums and I still am. I think they're beautiful. They're quite easy to grow once you get it right. They're just a little bit all over the place. Literally. This guy was on the floor as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, but yeah, other than that, if you can manage the growth pattern, I think they're easy to grow and I think they're a joy and even if the blooms don't last, because usually they last only a few days, I think they are such a celebration when they bloom. They're centerpiece worthy. This one is centerpiece worthy. I mean, if I find a nice shallow dish at this point, I could go for dishes without a drainage. What is this if not a dish without drainage? Yes, this has drainage, but this you know, is a dish that catches the water that I give it and I never pour it out because we don't do that in our environment here. It's so hot that we don't spill water. We don't, we don't run water through our pots here. <laughs> I'm kidding. So when I do this, it becomes a dish without drainage because I know how to dose the water. So now that I think about it, I can just, I can just get a dish that looks nice, no drainage, put sphagnum moss inside and a layer of bark on top and there you go. Hey presto, we have a new pot. I could do that. It just has to be a very wide dish, but I could do that. I might do that. So hey presto, centerpiece. I mean, if I ever have guests, I will put this in the center and tell everybody not to sniff it because they, they will not like it, but I would put it in the middle of a table. It's that type of orchid or this one. This one, I, I have another flower here, but I don't have as many flowers as I should. Oh, oh, the flower spike is tangled here under all of this growth. Maybe that's what's happening to my flower spikes. They're just not poking out anymore. Right, enough blabbing. That's about it on the Bulbophyllums. Let me know if you have some solutions for me, hot weather solutions. And yeah, with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed just chilling a little with me today. And, and with that said, I hope you'll have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.